Hey guys, this is the BRK Model 3000 smoke detector. It's called the Double System. And this is a very, very rare unit. Um, there are no other videos of this on YouTube. Well, technically there aren't, but I'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, this unit was made in the late 70s, I believe, possibly early 80s. And I'll get into the, why I say that in a few minutes as well. Now, you'll notice it looks, you know, like a 77R or a SA769AC. Um, this is a battery-powered unit. But you might be saying, well, why are there wires sticking out of it? Well, I'll get into that in a minute. And also, you may be wondering, why are there two test buttons? Um, but it will all become clear in a few minutes. Um, so, yeah. I got this detector as a gift from my parents. Uh, I got it brand new in box. In fact, here's the box right here. Um, it was sealed, never opened, never used, just completely new in box. Uh, so yeah, I got to open it for the first time and it's bright white, mint condition, perfect, it's beautiful. Um, and then it also came with this battery, this old Energizer, and this is one of the reasons why I say it's probably a little bit later because it did not have a Mallory. Um, typically, uh, the older 70s ones came with Mallory's. This one came with an Energizer. It's a cool old Energizer. I don't have any of these yet, so add this to my collection of old batteries. Anyway, um, so let's get into the inside of the unit. So take off the cover, which is a, like I said, a cover very similar to the 77R and SA769AC. But if I take the cover off, you'll see it is completely different. So you can see here why they call it the double system smoke detector. It has two sensors. Um, it's actually a dual sensor unit. This is the very first dual sensor unit that BRK ever made. So right here you have your normal coffin-shaped ionization sensor. And right here is your photoelectric sensor. And it uses a modified 77R PCB. Um, and I'll, I'll get actually, I got my 76RS right here. You can see it has a, it's the same shape and the horn and sensor are in the same place. Well, relatively the sensor I just noticed is flipped around and the test button is on the, the ionization test button is on the other side. But yeah, it's a, it's an, a modified 77R PCB. Um, so it has, like I said, two buttons. The, I, the two buttons, there are two buttons for each sensor, so... The ionization uh, test button is the normal tiered test button, and the photoelectric test button is on top of the photoelectric sensor, and it's kind of shaped like the tip of a black crayon, so we call this one the crayon button, I guess. I don't know. So the horn is here. It's the regular Kobishi CLB27 brass squealer. Um, so yeah. And then here's the cover, the inside of the cover. It is actually the exact same as the 77R cover, except it has an added hole. Um, this hole down here was added because it does fit on the SA76RS's base, as you can see, but there's an extra hole. So that's what the 77R would look like. And the cover from the SA76RS would ideally fit on here, but that ionization test button is in the way. So some interesting things of why I think this detector is from the late 70s or early 80s. Well, first, you'll, you'll see the, um, the color of the circuit board. The color of the PCB is red. Well, it's um, white with red uh, markings. That was used in the 80s on the 79R PCBs, whereas these are all tan with black markings. Um, there's an LED under the test button. So that's interesting, because we all know that the 77R PCB did not have an LED under the test button right there. The sensitivity adjustment knob is in the way. Um, but these have LEDs underneath the test buttons. Um, there are two sensitivity adjustments. One right here, I'm guessing, is for the photoelectric sensor, and then the one right there is for the ionization, I'm guessing, once again. And there's no test socket on board, and no traces for a test socket like there are on there. You can see the test socket traces. But there's none there unless they're underneath the uh, uh, photoelectric sensor. But 
No, nope, it's just a bunch of um, resistors under there. So, um, yeah, let's talk about these two wires here. Now, this is, like I said, this is a battery powered unit. It's not hard wire with battery backup. It's strictly battery powered. These two wires are actually interconnect wires. So this is BRK's very first uh, attempt at interconnected battery powered units. Now this this feature was not continued on the 79R obviously, but it was actually brought back in a separate model, the 79DCRI, which is that rectangular or square model um, using the same cover as the SS or the same basin cover as the SS74. Um, and it was they had interconnect capabilities with that and it also I think had a relay in it or able to connect it to a relay I don't know I don't have one um, but yeah so that's a very interesting feature um, yeah so this is just such a strange detector it's really rare like I said um, now on the inside of the cover these black uh, this black plastic is actually oriented right here and the inlet, smoke inlet for the photoelectric sensor is right there. I don't know. Yeah, you can see it right there. That's where the smoke goes in. So that, I guess, is so that the photo cell doesn't see the white plastic and think it's smoke. Um, I guess that's why they did that. Now, put the cover back on. And turn it over. And here's the back of it. There's the label. Surprisingly, it has BRK's newer logo. And I was surprised by that because you saw that on the PCB, if you look really closely, right there is the old BRK logo next to the coffin shape sensor. And in the manual, which I'll get to in a few minutes, also has BRK's old logo. So I don't know why they did that. Let's see if I can get the cover back on without setting it off. That would. In the y shape, so it's really hard to get the cover back on. I mean, it's already hard to get the cover back on the SA76 RS, but you got an extra test button in here. There it is. Okay. Oh, I think I just set it off accident. Or no, that was the wire hitting the horn of the SA76 RS. Okay, put this aside. Okay, so like I said, the BRK newer logo, and there's a model number 3000. There's no serial number on here, which I thought was interesting. Um, another thing that's really strange that I thought, um, I mean, not among anything else, is that this one, you saw it had the coffin-shaped sensor, but 77Rs with the coffin-shaped sensor always have five microcuries of americium. This one only has one, so again, just a clue that maybe this one was very late in the 77R, uh, timeline. So... And then, of course, it has that S-1208 that these all, every single BRK detector has. I think even the ones today have that. Um, okay. So, uh, First Alert actually did make a version of this, or BRK made a version for First Alert, for the First Alert label. And it had the, the same cover as the SA76RS, except it had a, another hole down here for the test button, for the second test button. Um, well, actually, it would have been the ionization test button because the test buttons are swapped on this one. Sears also rebranded these. Um, uh, they had a version with the Sears, classic Sears cover, um, and Nathaniel Enlind on YouTube has one of those. He has a video of it. Um, I will put a link to his video in the description. But, uh, like I said, there's no video of the original BRK3000. Um, so Nathaniel's video right now is the only other video of one of these. Um, his doesn't have the wire, or his has the interconnect capabilities, but his doesn't have the wires for the interconnect, the wiring harness. Okay, so, um, I will test both sensors for you, but it takes a really long time for the photoelectric sensor to test, um, so I'm kind of nervous about that because it is kind of loud detector. Um, so I'll test the ionization portion with the pushing the tear button. So that's the ionization sensor, and the horn is, you know, it's higher pitched than this one, I think. Yeah, it is higher pitched. Um, and I, I don't know if you could see, but underneath the test button, the LED is on constantly when the alarm is sounding. So, yeah. Now, it says in the manual that the LED will either be constant or flashing. 
and I'm not sure if the ones that flashed also pulsed the horn. So, or maybe they just never made flashing ones. Maybe that was just a factory mix-up. So, yeah, um, now I'll test the photoelectric sensor. It takes about, I think, 20 or 30 seconds to test it, so yeah, it's going to scare me. Well, I did not expect it to go off that fast. I tested it like an hour ago, and it it took like 30 seconds to go off. Okay, let's see if it'll do it again really quickly for us. I don't think it's going to do it really quickly now. Whatever, we'll let it go off. See, that's what it normally does. It normally takes forever for it to go off. I don't know what it did the first time. Um, so yeah, so that's the sound it makes. I really like the sound. Um, it's not as raspy as my SA-76 RS. And like I said, it is higher pitched. Um, so yeah. Now, let's see. Let's take a look at the manual. Um, if I can open the box, because the manual is still inside the box. So here's the manual. Double system battery powered smoke and fire detector. And you can see right there the old logo. Um, and this is exclusively for model 3000, not for the 77R. So open it up. I probably should have used a tripod for this, but you know, whatever. So here's the front page. If you want to read it, you can pause. I will point out some interesting things if I see that I see you that I noticed. I like how they recommended you put this in a kitchen. Even though it's an ionization as well as photoelectric, it'll still go off with false alarms. Oh, and then it tells you not to put it in kitchens. Right underneath of it. Okay. About the horn. And here's about the interconnecting feature. Um, see, so yeah, all you do is you tie the yellows together, tie the purples together, and then when one detector goes off, senses smoke, the horn and the other detector will also sound. And here's about the radioactive material. There is no date or copyright date on this, so, like I said, I don't exactly know when it's from. And there's the diagram of the unit. See, the unit in this picture has a Mallory in it. Mine came with an energizer. It's pretty cool. I've never seen an, uh, a manual for an SA-76RS or a 77R in person, so I don't know if they have it. Well, I, that's not true. I, ha I had the uh, manual for my Sears that I used to have, the one with the heat sensor. Um, that was a rebranded SA-76RS. But not a genuine first alert one. Model 2000. There was also a 2000. I don't know what that would have looked like. Um, so, yeah. Testing. Now it says on here that the, the photoelectric uh, sensor will go off within one minute. Now, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. And then the ionization, they say it'll test in at least in about 10 seconds, but no, it goes off instantly. They all do. And then this is a, this is that table that I was telling you about. See, on the, in, the LED is either on or flashing when detecting smoke. Um, 
that's what I thought because th this one's on continuously. Well, they do recommend a Mallory. This was still being made when Mallory was still, or when Duracell was still part of Mallory. And there's the warranty. And there is a warranty uh, registration card inside as well. Here it is. Old logo once again. That's pretty cool. That's all faded and yellowed, I guess, from the or from the cardboard. And the mounting hardware is in here as well. Let's see. Old flathead screws. Anchors don't look too different from these, the ones made today. The thing interesting is the box does not say BRK on it at all. Um, it just has the model number right there, and it says radioactive material. 3000, I don't know what the 59P1 NRB III is, but yeah, and then fragile on that side, fragile on that side, fragile on that side, and then there's information about the maker of the package. So I'm guessing that these were contractor models then, I don't know. So, um, I think that's about it for this video. So that's the BRK3000 double system smoke detector. Um, yeah, thank you for watching, and more to come. Let's do one more test. All right, bye.